We previously learned that the stomach is a C-shaped organ that lies in the left side of your abdominal cavity. We also learned that the mucosa, or moist inner layer of the stomach, is dotted with millions of gastric pits, which lead to gastric glands. It is these gastric glands that secrete digestive juices needed to break down complex foods into simple nutrients. In this lesson, you will learn about the different juices that are secreted into the stomach and the role they play in digestion of your food. By the time food reaches the stomach, it's already undergone some digestion. The food has been physically broken down into smaller pieces by chewing. The starches in the food have also been acted upon chemically thanks to the enzyme salivary amylase found in your saliva from the salivary glands. Now to this point, digestion has been moving along quite briskly. After all, it doesn't take long to chew and swallow your food. However, when food reaches the stomach, it takes its time passing through. In fact, depending on the type of food you eat and the size of your meal, food will typically stay in your stomach for two to six hours before moving on to the small intestine. Now you can think of your stomach as both a temporary storage sack for food as well as a site for digestion. The walls of your stomach contain layers of smooth muscle. And as food enters your stomach, the walls begin to stretch, prompting the smooth muscle to contract. This muscle activity leads to the physical mixing and breaking down of food in the stomach, known as churning. In addition to this mechanical digestion caused by churning, there's also chemical digestion happening within your stomach. Specifically, we see the chemical digestion of proteins by digestive fluids. Now these acidic digestive fluids that are secreted by the gastric glands in the mucous membrane of the stomach are collectively referred to as gastric juices. And we previously learned that secretions of gastric juices from the gastric glands are regulated by the parasympathetic nervous system. And this involuntary nervous system increases secretions when activated by the sight, smell, or physical presence of food in the digestive tract. In addition, the presence of food and the change in the pH or the acidity of your stomach stimulates the release of a hormone called gastrin. This is a hormone secreted by glands in the mucous membrane of the stomach that stimulate the production of gastric juices. So you can see that there are a couple of triggers for the production of gastric juices. And this leads to a surprisingly large volume of gastric juice produced during the day. Under normal circumstances, approximately two or three liters of gastric juice are produced in your stomach in a 24-hour period. And now that's enough to fill at least one two-liter bottle of soda, and this is all happening inside of you without your conscious awareness. Now when we look closely at the gastric glands, we see that they're lined by epithelial cells. And there are several different types of cells within the gland, and they secrete different products. One of the important products of gastric juice that is secreted by these cells is pepsin. Pepsin is the chief digestive enzyme in the stomach that breaks down proteins. Now you can think of pepsin as the chief digestive enzyme in the stomach because it is produced by the chief cells. This can help you remember the term, but I should clarify that pepsin is the active protein digesting enzyme. The chief cells actually produce pepsinogen, an inactive form of pepsin. It's an interesting fact that many enzymes in the digestive system are initially produced in their inactive form. And we previously learned that an inactive form of an enzyme is called a zymogen. Zymogens, like pepsinogen, must be activated before they can actually perform their duty. And so you might be wondering why your digestive system would go through the extra step of producing an inactive form of an enzyme.